Hello everyone, it's good to see you or talk to you in this consecutive lecture number four to present more of what we started last lecture, the grammatical problems. So as I mentioned, the grammatical problems are so many that students face when interpreting or translating into target language. And Hassan introduced, adopted, as he said, a practical approach. He offered the problem and then tries to give an explanation or a solution to this problem. So for you, in order to avoid it. So we continue with... Um, Problem number, I think, 12 listed on page 58, translation of adjectives. First of all, you, you, I'm sure you're familiar with what adjectives are. They describe nouns. Like, you know, adjectives in English have a quite variable form as some of them are interchangeable with Nouns. Above all, they're ordered in a sense in a way different from Arabic because adjectives in English precede nouns. However, in, in Arabic language, precede the noun. تأتي بعد الموصوف الصفة والموصوف So, you know, and there are some problems that are listed under the translation of adjectives. One a problem According to Ghazali, that the one he offered, an adjective noun order in English, the way they're ordered in a sentence. It's a general well known rule in English that the adjectives occurs before noun, whereas in Arabic it comes after the noun, so it proceeds now. So here, adkia comes after the, the noun, proceeds it. However, in English, we say smart students. So we precede the adjective with the noun. Solution, reversing the English adjective noun order in Arabic. This solution is easy and known to students. Example, generous people are kind-hearted. And nasu al-kurama tayyibu al-qalbi or al qulub that tall young man is my cousin. Dakar Rajulu Tawilu Ibnu Ammi. She likes polite colleagues. Tahibu Zamilat Al Muhadabat. So you see that, that that's the way he offered a, a problem and then tries to give a solution. You know. And he mentioned in, in if you go back into your text and read some of the problems he listed in the adjective, the translation of adjectives, you find them so many. The ordering of a series of adjectives. Sometimes we describe a noun so many adjectives, or there are so uh, num, uh, 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 there's some adjectives that precede nouns. A number of adjectives can follow one another in a certain order in English when translated into Arabic usually the same order is reserved however translating them in the back order is also feasible so solution translate a series of adjectives either way so بالنسق نتاع الصفات زي ما هو جاي في اللغة الإنجليزية وأوقات نقدم ونوخر ما فيش بأس يعني دي إنجلش شوفوا المثال هذا دي إنجلش وذا maybe cloudy rainy and sunny كلها adjectives هذا cloudy rainy and sunny at the same time قد يكون الطقس الإنجليزي غائما وماطرا ومشمسا شفتوا كيف غير هنا اللي ممكن قال لكم يظهر يعني مشمسا وماطرا وغائما في الوقت نفسه so it, it's okay to keep it the same order or you do some sort of adjustments 
let's look at the the, uh, the example number two. He read a big, popular, useful book. قرأ كتابا كبيرا شعبيا مفيدا. شفتوا كيف غيرنا هنا في الصفات في التراتبية بتاعها مفيدا شعبيا كبيرا. Yeah. So it's okay. According to him, said translate the series of adjectives either way. That's the solution. So you, you don't have to abide by the order that was set in English. So it's okay. Throw that small round ball. Irmi tilka al kura sagira al mudawara or al mudawara sagira. Yet the same English order of adjectives is usually preferred. So preferable to maintain the same order that appeared on on uh, uh, the T out the, the the target language or the source language okay more of the problem is imitation of English sequence of adjectives like a, um, at using a number of English adjectives consecutively a comma is used to separate them from one another with and being used only before the last one that's some sort of grammatical you know yeah many students and translators do the same in Arabic but the sequence in Arabic is different and we have to abide by by it solution the repetition of and or no and so when and is used before the last adjective in English it's uh, Repeated before every adjective in in Arabic. The flow of Arabic is used wa 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 before every sentence. Whereas in English, we use a comma, and when we use it in the last sentence, we preceded it with and. So the two ministers discuss the political, social, and economic matters. ناقش الوزيران القضايا السياسية والاجتماعية والاقتصادية. So you see here in Arabic we proceed with with the connectors و و و. However, in English is different. He her dress is blue, soft, comfortable and cheap. ثوبها أزرق وناعم ومريح ورخيص. So that how how it is okay problem number four the use of adjectives as nouns sometimes we use adjectives as nouns like adjectives can be used as collective nouns in English when preceded by the the article the different article the and not followed by nouns like poor people the poor poor is adjective we proceed with a different article the and it's the poor الفقراء, the elderly, الكبار. Okay, and and so on. Some students may confuse such as specialty as singular nouns or adjectives in Arabic. Yeah, solution, the, the, the solution of the suggested problem, the plus the sifa adjective, plural noun in Arabic. So when we render it, it's to, to uh, plural noun in Arabic. Yes, but I'm going with the poor. كيف من من ترجمها ما نقولش الفقير ولكن في الواقع الفقراء the rich الأغنياء أو الأثرياء so that's how it adjectives used as collective nouns are translated into plural nouns in Arabic تترجم إلى الجموع في اللغة العربية not into adjectives or singular nouns okay look at this example the rich should help the poor rich people should help poor people actually so يجب على الأغنياء أن يساعدوا الفقراء. So we cannot translate the rich into الغني. ما نقدرش نترجمها إلى الغني به. Or the poor into الفقير. لازم it must be a collective noun. يعني جمعي. That's one of the problems listed under. So this is the whole about our. Uh, uh, translation of adjectives problems and please check the pages where it's I mentioned earlier okay go back to your text and take some of the notes so now we turn to our second slide more to talk about more of 
of uh, grammatical problems that was posed by uh, Mr. Hassan or Professor Ghazala. Um, in talking of uh, translation of tenses, you know, there's so many actually uh, problems that occur when we try to render the students rendering into from one language into another because of the number of tenses we have now let's look at the translation of tenses and their problems and solutions were offered I'm trying to make it like um, in a very uh, quick talk so and always you can visit the text from pages 61 you find it on page 61 for more uh, regress uh, details and examples you know please uh, try to read your text more and more and ask questions whenever you find um, 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 a problem so translation of tenses in English there are over 14 tenses the most common of which are 12 you know simple tense perfect tense progressive tense you must be no or you should have taken these sort of tenses right in your grammar courses and the perfect progressive tense in the present in the past like you know for and in the future for each type or oh, a tense has four types okay most of them have no precise equivalence in Arabic which has only two tenses the present mudara and the past and madi the imperative is not form not a tense this causes a few problems to the students of translation for some english tenses are difficult and can be confusing when rented into arabic the following discussion given an account of some of these problems and suggest possible solution to them in regard to the main tenses in particular so yeah like if we look into um, let's take one a problem the present and the past perfect tenses these two tenses have no one to one equivalent this causes a problem to students who try to hard who try hard to convey the exact time of the action implied in these two tenses some translators suggest Qad for the present perfect and laqad for the past perfect. So you see, يستخدم في قد يبدو بها استفتاحية للمضارع التام ولقد للماضي التام to precede the verb in the past. And we'll have example to that. This is a likely solution, but there are exceptions for this rule. قاعدة كل قاعدة لها شواهد for either Particle can be used with any kind of verb in the near or far past, and for instance, can be traced in the Holy Okay, Holy Quran. Other words like "latawa" uh, or "qabla qalil" for "qad" and "min al-zaman" or "qabla mudda" for "laqad," "laqad" or "qad." You know, so, so, yeah, have been suggest to indicate these two tenses however this can be an optional solution solution the present and past perfect equals past tense the direct easy and proper way of translating these two tenses is to regard them exactly as past tense so we have you have to regard these two tenses the present and the past perfect as past tense the following three examples are given when translation in Arabic. Like, look, we have three examples of English and their counterpart or equivalent, just one translation to Arabic. And look, let hear me out, say the example. We heard the news. This is past simple. We have heard the news. Present perfect. We had heard the news. You name it. Give me a name. What type of tense is it? It is past perfect. Great. So let's try the the translation. Who who can name a translation? لقد سا مش قلنا نستخدم لقد نسبقه أو قد 
Okay, you try it. You give it a shot. Okay, I'm hearing you out. Come on. Yes. I don't know. سمعت الأخبار. No, no. This is no. Uh, you, your plus. Grip. Uh, سمعنا. Okay, تمام. سمعنا what? What do we hear? Ah, okay. Hear, hear this translation. سمعنا الأخبار. أو لقد سمعنا الأخبار. أو قد سمعنا الأخبار. شفتوا هلا؟ ترجمة سلسة بسيطة قابلت الثلاثة أنواع من الأزمنة. Thus, therefore, the present and the past perfect tenses are both treated as past simple and translated into the past tense in Arabic. With or without, لقد or قد. So you see, it's one of our problems. So a second problem. So um, a second problem is the present and a past progressive. These two tenses always have no equivalence in Arabic. Therefore, students could find them problematic in translation when they insist on literal transmission. نقل حرف يعني present progressive equals present tense. We always translate it into present tense. Like if you look at this example, the wind is blowing now. The hub الريح الآن. إنهم يعملون بجد. They're working hard. يكتب جوزيف مقالة هذه الأيام. جوزيف is writing an essay these days. So more of uh, problems. Um, yeah. Like uh, uh, solution, past progressive, we use can, present tense. Like, look at this. Can, yeah. His son was playing football. And more of problems like present and past perfect progressive tenses. These two English tenses are quite complex for students to understand. And therefore, to translate into Arabic, for they have no equivalent in Arabic grammar. Therefore, uh, students try in vain to find identical versions for them by insisting on translating them and literally. They produce broken, poor translation. Yani, muqatta, awkward, rakika, tarjama rakika. Like, look, the soldiers have been fighting all day. Present perfect progressive. Al junudu ka inuna yuqatiluna tiwal al yaw. So you see, solution. Both tenses are translatable. Into can plus present tense. شوف أنا the soldiers have been fighting all day. شوف ترجمة الحلوة النينة. كان الجنود يقاتلون طوال اليوم. The terror had been suing all night. كان الخياط يخيط طوال الليل. Yeah, you see. So we use كان with the Present tense. More problems. Future progressive. More problems. Please check text for uh, several. And <coughs> so one more problem is the future perfect. Shall will have plus pp. Like for instance, it's not easy for students to translate the, the reference of a future perfect. Usually the resort, they resort. To literal translations, عادة ما يرجع إلى الترجمة الحرفية, which might lead to slightly awkward Arabic, يعني اللي هي ركاكة في التركيبة العربية. شوفوا المثال هذا. سيكون عدة أشخاص غادروا عند إب. Several persons will have left by then. So solution, the solution of this, the future perfect قد plus past. قد انتهى دائما نستخدم في التركيبة هذه followed by the preposition of phrase the pp man plus سنعون so that's the structure it should be several persons will have left by then شوفوا ترجمتها سوف يكون عدة أشخاص قد غادروا عن ذئب هنا أكثر 
سماحة يعني من حيث الترجمة Obviously these translations seem unusual even awkward yet they reflect the awkward complex tense of the original So as, as you see um, in, on, on a slide this is a summary of the translation uh, of the English main um, tenses into Arabic so English in Arabic look that's it's a gazala uh, summarize them in order for you to be easy to understand very quickly so if you look at one and two present simple and present progressive we translate it as present إلى المضارع في اللغة العربية فهي زي ما شفنا past simple present perfect and past perfect we turn them into past the translation is just past more than past progressive present perfect progressive and past perfect progressive I'm sure you know the structure of these uh, tenses so we we translate them as were plus present كان زائد الفعل في المضارع وهذا طبعا الاختصار او translation of tenses باختصارات مجمع لكم في قالب واحد زي ما تشوفوا فيه انتم في في السلايد هذا تبوا الاكثر ديتيلز امشوا لصفحة رقم خمسة وستين اوكي um. in talking of more of grammatical problems we turn into translation conditional sentences الجمل الشرطية بهي هذا بيطلق عليها بالجمل الشرطية let's know what are the conditional sentences on there are three types of conditional sentences in English ثلاثة أنواع but only two in Arabic نوعان في اللغة العربية the main problem here is the translation of the future past ماضي المستقبل would have into Arabic كيف هذه غالبا ما يخطو فيها الطلاب students might try to match the reference of the English future past example شوفوا إذا تنهى العمل أو إذا تنهي العمل باكرا فسوف أزورك شفت المقابل متاح في اللغة الإنجليزية conditional because started or starts with if you finish work early I will visit you if you finished work early I would visit you إذا انهيت العمل باكرا فسوف زرتك ففيها تحس ركاكة ولا تركيبة غريبة شوية if you had finished early I would visit you إذا أنهيت العمل باكرا فسوف كنت زرتك the three translations are unacceptable in Arabic grammar for إذا غير مقبولة في اللغة العربية can't be followed by the present واحد and سوف I and سوف does not precede the past two and three solution look at the solution yes let's have a solution um, so two versions in Arabic only uh, the English conditions are translated into only two types in Arabic to turn إلى نوعين بس في اللغة العربية بهي من ضمنها the real possible future present Arabic sequence if plus past or well plus present هذه التركيبة if you finish work early if you finish work early I will visit you إذا أنهيت العمل باكرا فسوف أزورك هنا فيها تغيرت التركيبة ولا if إذا تقابلها بالعربي in Arabic is usually followed by the past whether the reference is to the past or to the future إذا كان العائد سواء ماضي أو أو مستقبل دائما ما نستخدم معها ماضي Uh, or to the future however if as well can be followed by the present so number two if you finish work early I will visit you لو تنهي العمل باكرا سوف أزورك number two the unreal past Arabic sentence if plus past plus past لو انهيت العمل باكرا لزورتك if you finished work early I would visit you the additional letter L in Lazurtuk, the places with at the same time, so far. The disappear is completely in the past. Low and hate, Mashvi, so far. Shota, low and hate, Alamela back, you on Lazurtuk. Number three, um, 
impossible a real past air sequence if past لا بلا بلا لو أنك أنهيت العمل بكرة لزرتك أو لكنت زرتك أكثر جدية ومور عند translate um, uh, yes so um, these are the translation of conditional um, sentences you see the their counterparts in Arabic are just um, two and the three types in in English and please again for more details hear this out ask questions and read your reference read your reference for more examples thank you and grammatical problems are coming now we turn into the translation and change or the translation and change of word classes word classes when they change like from adjectives into nouns nouns into adjectives so we find some of these problems um, so the grammatical classes or categories of words in English are nouns verbs adjectives adverbs and prepositions articles and connectives or conjunctions sometimes you call it when a noun is translated into a verb an adjective into a noun and an adverb into an adjective etc. the word class is changed this creates one or two problems for the students okay uh, let's see one of the problems I'm not going if you die for details please check the pages from 67 through um, 70 so problem one Adjectives as nouns. Usually, English adjectives are translated into equivalent adjectives in Arabic. The problem for the students is the application of this as a fixed rule to the translation of all adjectives in both languages, but the case is not always so. Solution adjectives that we translate them into adjectives or sometimes nouns. Adjectives are translated into adjectives or nouns in Arabic. تتغير إلى ال... إلى الأسماء في اللغة العربية شوفوا زي مثلا number one the presidential palace ولا القصر الرئاسي تونا أوكي ترجمناها زي ما هي جاية equivalent equivalent لكن شفتوا قصر الرئاسة presidential هي صفة بالمقابل في اللغة العربية ترجمناها الرئاسة إلى اسم دينا أب مثال آخر شوفوا the United Nations Educational Scientific and Cultural Organization اللي هي they call it or acronym of it is UNESCO a lot we translate into UNESCO and it's understandable acceptable منظمة الأمم المتحدة للتربية والعلوم والثقافة تو شفتوا فواصل بيناتهم بين بين ال educational scientific cultural في فواصل ولا بعد ال educational scientific وبعدين and الرابطة أداة الرابطة تو في اللغة العربية لا ما نديرش فواصل ندير و والعلوم والثقافة و اوكي شوفوا المثال هذا نمبر 3 critical administrative and economic affairs شوفوا الشؤون السياسية والإدارية والاقتصادية شوفوا ترجمتها في العربي المرة الأولى ترجمناها كصفات المرة الثانية في العربي لما يعطيكم سلاش بعدها شؤون السياسة والإدارة والاقتصاد مقبولة. Let's look into another problem is nouns as adjectives. Nouns can be used as an adjective. In English they might cause a problem to students like solution nouns. We translate them into nouns or adjectives. The choice is between translating some English nouns into nouns or adjectives into in Arabic like the status كو الوضع الراهن غاز شلندر استوانة غاز أو استوانة غازية شفتها على أني مرتين مرة ترجمناها ك... كاسم ومرة ترجمناها كصفة يعني it's acceptable okay and, and, and so on please check for more details your textbook nouns as verbs sometimes we nouns as verbs one of problems English nouns are usually translated into nouns okay or at times into adjectives in Arabic now however a noun can be translated into a verb to 
solution nouns into nouns or verbs that's the the solution of the problem posed by Ghazala and he thinks that students would commit mistakes into it the majority of English nouns are translated into nouns or adjectives yet some of them would accept translations into verbs in Arabic keeping indoors for a long time is boring البقاء في البيت لمدة طويلة ممل المرة ترجمناها كفعل أن تبقى في البيت لمدة طويلة شيئا أو شيء ممل May I take my leave استأذن أو اسمح لي ها. Attention أو pay attention انتبه أو انتبهوا الحالة دي مرة اسم مرة Okay and, and so on Problem number four, verbs as nouns. Generally speaking, main verbs in English are usually translated into verbs in Arabic. غالباً ما تترجم الأفعال إلى أفعال في اللغة العربية. But some can be changed into nouns. ولكن أوقات أحياناً نقدر نترجمها إلى أسماء. الحل solution تلقوا حسن غزالك مشار إليها في صفحة 69. Verbs into verbs or nouns. Moreover, some verbs may have two versions in Arabic. Um, okay, like um, verbs and nouns. Example: I'm going home. أنا ذاهب إلى البيت. أذهب إلى البيت. تو ذهب هنا يعني. English is easy to understand. الإنجليزية سهلة الفهم. الإنجليزية سهلة أن تفهم. سهلة أن تفهم. مرة لولا في اسم جبناها ولا ترجمناها إلى اسم. المرة الثانية ترجمناها ك... كفعل. We're ready to buy the house. نحن جاهزون أو مستعدون لشراء المنزل. هنا فعل جد لشراء. لكن بالمقابل في اللغة العربية نقدر الفعل هذا نحوله إلى اسم لنشتري المنزل. And so on. So these are mainly the problems of um, of um, um, translation and change of word the classes so now because I, I put this um, another pro uh, grammatical problem into one slide and that's the translation of articles uh, what are the articles you I'm sure you know them yes can you please oh a and an and the the different or a different article the look into page 70 for more details so um, there are two articles in English the different and, and the different articles in Arabic however there is only one article the different article no equivalent is available for the uh, indefinite article the problem is not with this difference of articles between the two languages but in the use but in the use of the definite article the in Arabic one problem is the translation of the and also that's one problem just read it the solution is um, um okay um so what's a, let's see the problem it's obvious that the use of the that is usually pro the minimum in arabic moreover in general and abstract words for instance the is implied not mentioned but in arabic it's mentioned flow arabia wadha on the other hand, in the genitive case, al-idafa, the is mentioned before each of the two nouns in English, whereas in Arabic it's used only before the second noun. So let's see the solution of this problem. Um, you know, as you see on the slide, the, the one colored with the yellow, zero article, or equals or oh, بالمقابل different article in English general and abstract nouns are used without articles الأسماء المجردة والعامة نستخدمها بدون أداة تعريف الإنجليزية but in Arabic like في العربية they are preceded by the different article L as a following example illustrates شفتوا man is a speaking animal الإنسان شفتوا L الإنسان حيوان ناطق general philosophy is my favorite subject abstract هنا فعل اسم مجرد الفلسفة مادتي المفضلة keep medicine out of children's reach abstract نصيحة مجردة بعيدة 
أبعد الدواء عن متناول الأطفال وهذه فيها عموم so you see uh, the difference between um, these um, two types of different articles in English and Arabic and, and more of problems occur with the, like look into page 71 you find uh, the solution of another problem or more of solution the genitive or genitive in Arabic if you look at the organization of the United Nations for instance منظمة الأمم المتحدة or the signing of the birds or the singing sorry of the birds غناء الطيور more, more details you get on page uh, 71 and 70 so that's all about the problems the American problems of translation and change of word class and translation of articles um, hello so now we are moving into another grammatical um, problem and that's uh, translation of conjunctions um, you should you should know what conjunctions are or what um, sentence connectors um, conjunctions or sentence connectors are the words or the phrases used to connect sentence together they usually occur at the beginning of sentences with possible occasional variations of position in the middle or at the end of them at the end of sentences it's hard to imagine a text of two or more sentences without some conjunctions or connectors used to connect its parts that's say sense with one another okay so um, <clears throat> that's what the conjunctions are and always students face challenges to translate these connectors or um, sentence uh, connectors mm, um, and that's why he considered to uh, offer this uh, problem and solution for details again you visit page 72 of the book um, uh, it's not, uh, 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 we have one uh, having established the vital importance of conjunctions in language it's possible now to introduce their main types for the convenience and simplification I adopt Halliday and Hassan's of course I'm quoting Ghazala 1976 division of conjunctions into four major kinds see also uh, Quirk et al 73 Nash and Ghazala 94 for more details and different positions of or points of vox. Uh, one of the problems is additive uh, conjunctions. Example, and also, or furthermore, in addition, besides, besides that, alternatively, likewise, similarly, in the same way, for instance, for, that is, I mean, etc. These are called additive conjunctions or harf al and wa also aydan or aw so further furthermore moreover alawatan ala dhalik fawqa dhalik in addition bil idafa ila dhalik aw adaf ila dhalik besides bil idafa ila dhalik ila janib dhalik bil idafa ila dhalik so etc these are some of the problems you know these conjunctions are um, used to add more information and details by way of additive so it's like adding affirmation that is I mean namely أي معنى ذلك يعني ذلك ذلك يعني etc إلى آخره if we had another type is called contrastive conjunctions but however yet though although يعني بالمقابل ديما but لكن لكن على أن بيد أن إلا أن however لكن على أي حال yet لكن ومع ذلك على أي حال yeah, visit for more details. Visit page 40, 74 and seventy five. Number three, it's a type of conjunctions, casual connectors or conjunctions of reasons. Reason they they're classified into various re, uh, types. We have a reason because for as um as to لهذا السبب بسبب هذا بناء على هذا result and طبعا connectors casual connectors. It's called a result. We have a condition. We have a temporal connectors. Um, so 
<clears throat> Temp- uh, another type, sorry, is called temporal connectors, conjunctions of time, like sequence, مثلا, they first, secondly, next, then, أول, and ثاني, and بعد, ذلك, simultaneously, في الوقت نفسه, precedence, precedence, سابقا, or conclusion, أخيرا, immediacy, and present and past, summary, blah, blah, and tetra, you know, so these are the types of connections or connectors. Or sinus connectors, you you may want to insult uh, the text for more uh, details. Please check him from time to time and use it as a reference because you may need it in your um, a translation in, in the future. Um, and and that's all about uh, grammatical uh, problems. Mr. Uh, Professor Gazala listed in his his chapter grammatical problems. Now we come to conclusion. We're wrapping up this chapter talking about grammatical problems. You know, we listed so uh, several types of problems that occur while students uh, translate or render from one language into another. Uh, please consider them. Uh, check them again. Go back to hear out this presenta- these presentations. Take notes and go back to your reference for. And 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 use this reference as as a guide to avoid such problems. Um, now it's a grammatical problems conclusion. The grammatical problems of English Arabic translation are numerous. Of course, there's so many. As I said in the first uh, uh, at the beginning of this chapter, they arise from different oh, differences between the two languages grammatical aspects like tenses, word order, questions, negation, personal, pronouns, adjectives, the class of words, verbs, nouns, adjectives, etc., articles, sentences, connectors, etc. So there are so many to name. Um, the account of grammatical problems given in this chapter is not final. That's not the whole of the problems that occur, but I'm sure they are most common. Other problems like the translation of adverbs and prepositions are not included. Prepositions are partly discussed in chapter 2. The one I'm going to, I'm going to explain for the upcoming lectures, and that's the lexical that has to do with lexes. Um, see the translation of collocation, whereas adverbs are included. An <clears throat> example used throughout this book, Feda. There are the three grammatical forms in Arabic which can be used to translate English adverbs except adverbs of time, place, and frequency. One word, prepositional phrase, preposition plus noun, quickly, psura, and etc. So another minor grammatical problem is the translation of direct and indirect objects. There is no problem when a direct object is first, following by the indirect object, like he gave a present to his Daughter, so present is a, an, an object and his daughter is another object. He bought a car to his daughter. However, the problem arises when a direct object precedes the direct object. For instance, like he gave his daughter a present. So he bought his daughter a car. Ibnatahu Sierra. Although the first isn't problematic as Ata takes two objects in Arabic as well. The second can use cause confusion to some students. For Ishtara takes only one object in Arabic Therefore it would be misunderstood as he bought his daughter Ishtara Ibnatahu. He bought his daughter, and nobody buy or sell his daughter. So solution: the direct object in English should be translated with its deleted preposition into Arabic as follows: like ishtara li ibnatihi siyara. So this confusion is disposed of. And the Arabic version is made grammatical as Ishtara doesn't accept two objects. All grammatical problems with translation discussed earlier in this chapter are followed by their possible solution. So he adopts the practical, what he named as a practical approach, where he offered the problem and then 
uh, a solution okay <clears throat> so trans uh, by their possible solution so that the process of transition can proceed fluently and properly and the search for meaning may therefore continue in the right direction giving way for a far more important and difficult lexical problems of translation to be discussed in detail and then solved hence chapter 2 will proceed as lexical problems we are done now with grammatical problems <coughs> I'll, I'll send you some exercise to uh, to work on for this chapter thanks for listening and stay tuned and well